unintroduced procedures used in the DNA fingerprinting lab. Restriction enzymes break the sugar phosphate bonds between certain sets of nucleotide bases, called a recognition site. A restriction enzyme will only cut at that specific sequence of DNA every time it appears. For different DNA, it will be at different places and even cut multiple times. Each time it cuts linear DNA, it will result in a fragment. The more the DNA contains the recognition site, the more it will cut, resulting in more fragments. They are found in bacteria. There are more than 3,600 restriction enzymes. Agrose gels in our lab are a 1% agrose solution made with agrose powder and 1x TAE. After mixing, it must be heated in a microwave until dissolved and clear. Then it must cool in a water bath until it is 60 to 65 degrees Celsius. At this point, it can be poured into a gel box. Make sure that all the combs are in and the walls are up. When the gel appears foggy, it is ready to be placed in the chamber with the comb removed and the walls down and the wells on the side of the chamber with the black electrode that indicates a negative charge. Pour 1x TAE over the gel or place it in a chamber already loaded with 1x TAE. Pipettes are used to transfer small quantities of liquid. To use, unlock and turn to the knob to the desired volume. Here, 10 microliters of restriction enzyme. Then lock it once more. To extract liquid, press until a first stop is felt and release. To expel the liquid, press all the way past this first step. To release the tip, press the button on the side and the tip will be ejected. To help visualize the DNA and to make it more dense, a loading dye is added containing a dye and a sugar. Here we're using five microliters added to each DNA sample after digestion. Pipette the desired amount needed to load into each well. Keeping steady, go inside the well, but do not pierce it and expel the DNA. This is what the gel looks like after the wells are filled. Now it is time to run the gel. Place the lid on the chamber, making sure all the black cords lead to the black jacks and that the same is true for all the red cords. Turn on the power supply and run the gel for 30 minutes at 100 volts. The DNA filled wells are on the black side since DNA is negative and the negative charge will repel it down the gel. This is an effective way of identifying DNA fragments from 0 0.5 to 25 kilobase pairs. Even when the DNA is large when compared to the size of the gel pores, the rate of migration is solely dependent on the DNA, since linear DNA will snake through those pores. The smaller number of base pairs a fragment is, the faster it will travel Therefore, the farther down the gel it will be. After the run is done, turn off all power and remove the chamber lid. Remove the gel and place it into a staining tray. Cover the gel with stain and leave it overnight. The first lane in the gel is the ladder. It breaks down at known fragments and is there for quantification. Lane two is the criminal DNA, and the five lanes after that are the suspects. The digestion will cut the DNA at the recognition sites, and for each DNA it will be different, except for the suspect's DNA that was at the crime scene. Those two will cut at the exact same spots, will have the exact same number of fragments, and will appear the same on the gel. Here you can see that the suspect number two, which is in lane four, matches the criminal DNA. Case solved.